Fox Sports. We are Fox Sports. We are NC. Royals baseball back in Minneapolis. The Royals scored 11 runs yesterday afternoon to take game one from the Twins. Royals baseball is presented by Academy Sports and Outdoors. Minnesota had early leads, but in the fifth inning, Kendry's Morales hit a three-run home run. That gave the Royals the lead. They would hang on to that lead the rest of the game. And then Eric Hosmer with the punctuation three-run home run in the eighth inning. All nine starters with a base hit, including two three-run home runs. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the ballpark with Rex Hudler. I'm Ryan Lefevre. Three-run home runs are nice. Ooh, man, what a pressure buster. You got to have those. Man, the, the, having a big lead at the end of the game like that is special. They want to continue it. And the Royals, no disrespect to the competition, but if the Royals are going to either win the division or get a wild card spot, you got to beat the teams you should beat. And as we look at our Academy Sports and Outdoors leaderboard, the Royals will be playing a lot of games against teams they should beat. Yes, but especially they've changed those road woes into road wins. 12 and 5 in the last 17 road games. That's getting it done. We all know how they could play at the K. But I'll tell you what, you mentioned it. Look at the 14 game stretch where they're playing some teams that they should beat. However, this is baseball. You never know from night to night. But this team's keep that one game focus and they'll be okay. And it doesn't hurt that the Royals DH is having quite a surge in the last month of the season. We'll talk KMO next. several days it may hold off until 9 or 10 p.m. Let's look at our Kubota power stats for tonight and some big numbers for Kendry's Morales. He's oh. saving the best for last. Man, remember early in the season people were going, oh no, what's wrong with Morales? He, he lost his stroke. Uh-uh. He knows he's in his eighth season in Major League Baseball this year. It's how you finish, not how you start. And he's picking it up from both sides of the plate, getting some key RBIs. And on the topic of, oh, no, what's happened to 
For most of the year, it was the fifth spot in the starting rotation, but Dylan G has been thriving. a few different guys in the number five spot in the rotation recently he has settled on Dylan G and that's really paid off for him it has and you know what players reward their managers when you stay with them and that's exactly what G's done last three starts you kidding me two four five that's the guy they envisioned when they signed him in the offseason to fill in that fifth spot and he's done a great job down the stretch Royals are 12 and 2 against Minnesota this year a win tonight and that's a sixth consecutive winning series against the Twins This year, here's Ned Yost lineup tonight. One change from yesterday afternoon. Raul Mondesi is back batting ninth and playing at second base. It was Whit Merrifield in 
that position yesterday. Royals scored 11 runs on 16 hits and had two three run home runs. And now Irvin Santana. Irvin Santana, it's been a while since he has beaten the Royals. You have to go back to August of 2010. 0 and 5 in his last seven against KC. Yeah, but he's a consistent veteran starter. He knows exactly what to do. He's going to try to pound that strike zone with fastballs and get ahead of hitters and then finish him off with his great slider. That's what he's been doing. He, he's going to eat up at least five innings, they would hope. Five innings is all that Paul Molitor got out of Jose Barrios yesterday. And he gave up five runs in those five innings. Inside to Dyson, two balls, no strikes. Gerard Dyson scored three runs yesterday. Had three hits and a stolen base. Three balls and no strikes. How about it? He'll take a free ride. Now, last start against the White Sox, Irvin Santana gave up 11 hits. It's a season high, but he stranded 10 runners. Talked about his veteran uh, ability and finishing guys off with runners in scoring position, and it helped them snap a 13 game losing streak. So he was able to execute when he needed to, but he was up with his fastball. You got to get it. Drilled to center field, but it stays up for Buxton. So Dyson did a good job of hitting himself in a hitter's count. He got a hittable pitch and hits into bad luck. Our Golden Oak lending keys to the game for the Royals. Slash and dash. 31 out of 32 steals versus Kurt Suzuki since 2014. And don't get bulldozed. Can't let Dozier get you. Stay out of the middle. Pitch to him. But out of the zone. Paulo Orlando. Bats second and takes a fastball for a strike. Two hits. A run scored and an RBI for Paulo. That was a very rare first pitch fastball take for Paulo Orlando. It's one thing to say, you know, a guy goes up there and he's just wailing away at the first pitch, but Paulo's very good at picking out the pitch that he wants if it's a first pitch, and he's hitting over 500 when he swings. Had a first pitch in an at bat. And he missed on the bunt attempt. One ball, two strikes. And he picked the right pitch there, slider. It's the one you want. It's moving straight down, but couldn't get it. Too bad because third baseman Eduardo Escobar was back. All he had to do was just bunt it firmly to fair, and he would have had a base hit. Ball was out over the plate. Still one and two. Irvin Santana, his nickname is El Maneo from the Dominican. That means shaker. When he walks, he shakes his head. Fastball slider change. I don't know if that helps the hitter at all, but he puts that slider right there. It's going to be tough. Slider is out pitch. League's only hitting 226 off it. Gets ahead of you, teases you. It looks like it's on the plate, but at the last minute, it breaks off. It's a good pitch, and he throws it often. Only Chris Archer and Michael Pineda throw a higher percentage of sliders in the major leagues. 0-1 ah! to Eric Hosmer. Hosmer drove in four in yesterday's game, and he did that in two innings. He had a sack fly in the seventh and a three run home run in the eighth. One ball one strike. He's gotten Irvin before out of his six hits two of those have been homers. 316 off of Irvin. Good wide base. Let's see what he's doing with his foot. Is he picking it up. Is he loading it. Or is he toe tapping. Or just going up on that total two strike approach. Okay, He wound up. Talking with Hall of Famer Twins manager Paul Molitor before the game. He talked about the new you know, 21st century and the hitters. And, and I told him how 
when no one ever told me any of my hitting instructors said to stay inside of the ball with your hands. He goes, that's new. That's new. That's, that's a thing that they say nowadays. And the other is get your foot down. That's the new term. We didn't have that in our day. No one flamingo kicked. No one, no one loaded up their hips like that. So Molitor was giving me a little, little lesson on what we're, we're seeing every day. Stay inside the ball. You have a better chance of getting hits in the middle of the field. I was a top hand pull guy. I, I grounded out a lot and hit a lot of balls foul that should have been fair if I'd have had a bottom hand. I've heard Ned Yost say the exact same thing. Ned was a dead pull hitter and he tried to hit the ball up the middle and go to the opposite field and just couldn't do it. Mm -hmm. And he has said I sure wish someone would have said to me stay inside of the ball. <laughs> I would I would have tried that. Osmer comes back and takes a two out walk. Fifty seventh walk for Osmer or excuse me 52nd. Twins defense their outfielders minus 27 defensive run saved. That's not good. But now with Buxton here in their center field Rosario's got good speed. Kepler's a good athlete that should change in their future. I don't think the Minnesota Twins are a bad team. I just think that they have issues with their pitching and their bullpen. They're going to have to figure out. But that that's the hardest uh, to do. It's in hard game. to be a good team when you have problems in those areas. Right. So the hardest thing is to is to acquire bullpen talent. So they're going to try to do that. Kentry's Morales had the Royals biggest hit yesterday. Royals were down. In the fifth inning, and with two on and two out. Kendrys hit one down the stairs, across the plaza, and down the street. <laughs> and he got all of it. I asked him before the game. Did he get all of that? Yes. Identical. Watch down out. the stairs. Incoming. Across the plaza. Pilot to down the deer. street. You better open up them doors and duck. That ball was coming in hot. They're going to rename those stairs the Morales Steps at Target Field. Cheese and crackers, what a bomb. We just got through showing it to you, and I think this one went further, but thankfully it didn't hit anybody on the top of the dome. That ball got small in a hurry. Lost it up in those clouds, and again, <laughs> look at that. His old teammate, Urban Santana. I'm going to trot all of them. Salvi was out in front just enough. And Buxton makes a play with two outs and nobody on. Eric Hosmer was down in the count one and two. He takes a walk, and Kendry's Morales hits one to deep right field. Lead 2 0. Huh. It's not coming back. Out the gate. There you go, sir.
in his last nine games. But then look at this guy, our Toyota League leaders. Brian Dozier has 21 home runs in his last five games. He has homered in four straight, six of his last seven. And suddenly, Brian Dozier is second in the major leagues with 38 home runs. It's amazing. When he stepped into the box yesterday, this time we were talking about how he liked to shoot the 35, you know, home runs by the time it's over, maybe possibly 40. Now we're talking 40, 45. Two breaking balls from Dylan G. Two balls, no strikes. Don't want to give him any, anything straight out over. As hot as he is. Oh, can you believe it? Unbelievable. Yeah. Two and oh. Throw him another slider. Don't let him do that to you. Cookie ball. He is now homered in five consecutive games. He has homered in seven of his last eight games. And no one had ever hit more than eight home runs in one season against the Royals. And Brian Dozier has hit 11. And we still have four more games after tonight. It's incredible. You get pitches like that, you're going to pop it up, you know, maybe, maybe three, four, five times out of ten. But he's not missing. That is his hot zone. Don't throw it. He's he gives himself a lot of space between his hands, under his arms and his hands, so he's able to clear his hips, and he's just got a smooth path to the ball. He creates space. Now take nothing away from Dozier. If you're a big leaguer and you hit three home runs in a game. That's impressive. If you're a big leaguer and you have 39 home runs with three and a half weeks ago, that's impressive. But when the Twins really needed him yesterday, with two on and two out in the fourth, the bases loaded, one out in the sixth, the Royals got him out. Tough play, Cuthbert, and Polanco beats it out for an infield single. Dylan G. He was the Royals swingman for most of the first half, swinging back and forth from the rotation and long relief. And Nadio said before the game today that he thinks Dylan G's recent success has a lot to do with he is no longer the swingman. He is the fifth starter. That's right, and he stepped up and answered the call. Ah. Strike to Joe Maurer. 0 for 4 with a walk in yesterday's game. And now Joe Maurer is hitless in his last 16 at bats against the Royals. That's a good thing. G's been settling in using all four of his pitches. Chance for two. Out at second. Double play. Oh, how much easier it is it in the 21st century this season? Where no one comes after you to break up the double play. That's beautiful. That's a tight play. You know, the base runner, Polanco, has good speed. He got down there in plenty of time, but you can't break up the double play. So that allowed Escobar to get that in there. And they did that. They made that rule so it would preserve the health of the players out there and no one would get hurt. But they never thought about that rule all the 100 years before this year. Wasn't as much money involved, Ted. I agree. Money changes everything. Ah! Strike to Trevor Plouffe. Breaking ball down and away. One ball, one strike. Plouffe was at third base yesterday where he's played most of his twins career. He's at first today. That's well hit. 
deep left center field. And Minnesota ties the game in the bottom of the first with two solo home runs. Boy, how big was that double play now? This place opened up and they said you can't hit home runs here. Yeah. I was talking with Molitor today about the home runs that are hit here, and he said we're we're a fair park. It's a fair park. It's not like a, 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 a you know, some balls die out there in center field, but for the most part, pull left field, right field lines, you know, those are basically home balls that you can hit them out here. So he agreed that it's fair. Reached out and got his slider. Too much of the plate. No way you throw a 2 0 cookie to Dozier, the guy's hottest guy on the planet. So whether Salvi put that pitch down or G agreed to throw it, lots of times guys' pride will get in the way. They'll say, Yeah, you can't hit my fastball, though. You might have hit the Kennedy's, but you can't hit mine. And they throw it. That's why that happens. It's where, pride. Was the, where was the target, though? He missed. That breaking ball stayed up to Kepler. Four hits for Minnesota in the bottom of the first against G. I know this. All three home runs that Dozier hit yesterday, the pitch did not hit the target. Look at that target. Down and away. Yeah, but I'm just talking about pitch selection. I'm not even going to throw him a fastball. Yeah, but if, if he hits a target, he can't hit. He, he not can't a, hit a ball down and away into the second deck. No, he won't hit it out of the park, but it's early in the game. He hasn't established his pitches yet. It's too early to throw a hot hitter that pitch. That's all I'm saying. Threw him two breaking balls. Should just went with another one. So what if you walk him? G's had issues in the first inning this year too. He's, he has a 6.75 ERA with seven home runs allowed now. Opponents hitting over 300 in the first innings on him. Eduardo Escobar playing at third base. He drove in one of the Minnesota runs. Yesterday, that's well hit, but pulled foul. Escobar tried to drop down a sacrifice bunt with a runner at second and nobody out, and got a run home. And he Rosario scored from second base when the Royals failed to cover home plate. Which you got was, excited about that? Which play. was an instinctive play that a, a guy with speed can can only do that. So he he utilized what they gave him and he took it. He was looking to score. <laughs> Slash foul. One and two. Royals defense sponsored by Ford. Eric Hosmer. Look at him. He's an Iron Man. One hundred thirty fourth start. Most in the AL for a first baseman. Ned can't do without him. Even though Morales plays a, a outstanding first base. Now he has Dozier here. He wants his gold glover over there. I don't blame him. He saves runs. He saves airs. He saves pitches. He saves games. Still one and two on Escobar. Dylan G has had a tough time at Target Field this year. He has now given up eight home runs in fewer than 11 innings. And four home runs he's given up to Dozier. Two and two. We've talked about it before. First innings can, can be tough on pitchers until they've established their and found out what pitches are working that particular night for them from the hill. Five hits in the first inning for Minnesota. Here comes pitching coach Dave Island. 
Well, he's got. He's going to tell him, "Hey, look, you, you got to get up back behind the ball and stay on top of it and drive down. Get that shoulder work in. You're, you're pulling off. Your location's not good. It's over the middle of the plate, and that's why they're hitting you. Try to move it around a little bit more. Pitch inside. Knock him off the plate. When you don't have a power fastball like Dylan G. And not one particular pitch is a, is a, a wild pitch. You got to knock him off the plate. Don't let him get comfortable in there. Utilize the inside part of the plate. Slider curve change. He's got all four. Suzuki's a good hitter too. He's hitting the seventh hole. He's got a 305 average with runners in scoring position. He's six for 17 in his career off a of G. So this inning's far from over. He's got to execute. Got away with one. It stays in. It will not. Easy, big fella. Look what this one was. A little bit of little bit of sinking action, but elevated right in the middle. Kepler's at second, Escobar's at first. Hit to left field, jammed him. Alex makes a play. So fasten your seatbelts. It's home run derby at Target Field. Leagues. 39 home runs. Trevor Plouffe adds his 12th. And the Twins tie the Royals. Urban Santana had given up a two out, two home run, two run home run to Kendrys Morales in the top of the first inning. Mark Trumbo's in trouble. I'm a second baseman going to catch he's him. A, he's a power hitter in a home run ballpark. All right. If you asked Ned before the game if, if they would intentionally pass Dozier, kind of joking to begin the game, right? To begin the and start the game, never seen it before. <laughs> Put a guy on. He laughed. Ha ha. No, we're just not going to throw many fastballs down the middle. Oh, oops. Well, Ned, you know, Ned brought up too that not every fastball down the middle ends up in the outfield seats. Exactly. You pop up half of those. We've, we've brought this up before that you know when when you at the end of the game and you say he only made one mistake. Now he only paid for one mistake. 
but Dozier right now is in a mode where he's just not missing anything. His manager. Oh. Alex is probably expecting a slider with two strikes. And Santana threw him a fastball at 94. I asked Paul Mauter, does he have a comparable for Dozier? Do you have somebody in your day that was like him? And he, he thought, and he says, no. Especially nobody this hot right now. He's never seen a kid, a young player that can hit the ball out of the ballpark and it never misses. He, he, he's, he's not popping him up or hitting a ground ball. He's, he's hitting him, squaring him up. Best comparison he could come up with was Brett Boone. Second baseman with power. Right, from the Mariners. One and one on Cuthbert. Irvin's like, great, I'm right back in this game. Tied him up. One and two. Two balls, two strikes. Going to go back to the slider. And that stayed out over the plate. And that's the second time in two innings. The Royal has lined out to Buxton in center field. Good swing by Cuthbert. Beautiful. We talked about staying inside of the ball in the first inning. Watch how he keeps his hands inside of this baseball on a breaker. Breaking ball down, stayed right through it. That ball was on the ground. He teed off on it. I mean, he smoked it. Look at that. Didn't, didn't roll his top hand. Hands don't roll until you're already through with the swing, and then they roll. That's called staying through the ball. Slider strike to Escobar. So you want to keep your hands inside the baseball. What exactly does that mean? Billy Butler gave me an explanation for that. One ball, one strike. It was taught to him by his father. And the way Billy would apply it is lead with the bat handle and make sure that handle always stays in between the baseball and your body. I, can, I agree. So the knob of the bat faces the pitcher as Escobar flies to center, getting over the knob. Begin with the knob of the bat facing the pitcher and keep those hands in between the ball and your body. Yeah, I agree. This, we'll talk about it more later. Maybe. Let's go Royals chant. 
Fans coming up I-35 for Labor Day here at Target Field. In Minnesota, they start school later. This was back to school day today. It was. Dylan G inside to Eddie Rosario. There you go. There's an inside pitch. Back him off. Breaking ball low, two balls, no strikes. Rosario had a three hit game yesterday, including a double. Change up, and came up and got Salvador Perez. Who surprisingly is okay. Ball magnet. Don't usually walk away from that one. Opposite field. Deep into the corner. Gone. Three two Minnesota. Another example, staying inside the baseball, keeping your bottom hand in there. Watch, watch him go. Watch his bottom hand. It's going away, but he waited. And he stayed inside it. He's able to catch it just right. Look at that good approach there. He had a nice balance. He wait and hit the ball back here. See, when you go opposite field, you got to wait longer. You're not going to hit it out there. You know, wait till it gets out of the plate to go that way. That was a nice swing. That ball was up and out of the zone. That wasn't a cookie. Now 0 and 2 on Byron Buxton. Well, on the bright side, you got to feel pretty good if you've given up three home runs in one plus inning, and you're down by one. Yeah, he's keeping him in the game. That's his job. Buxton strikes out, one away. Dozier comes up. Let's go to Joel. Yeah, hopefully I won't be interrupted by another home run. Ryan, yesterday we saw Brian Dozier with a three-homer game. That used to be an incredible occurrence. It's the 19th time that it has happened in a baseball game this year. Max Klepp Kepler did it for the Twins earlier this year. And for the Royals, Lorenzo Cain against the Yankees. 19 times, let's put that in perspective, in the last two seasons, there were 14 such occurrences. 19 this year is the second most of all time in one season. And all the occurrences that were similar were, were really during the steroid era. I was talking to some pitchers and some people today about any theories. And none of them think this has anything to do with performance enhancing drugs. But one theory I heard from a couple pitchers and a member of the staff was that they feel like maybe the, the baseball is wound tighter this year. And one guy even telling me that it feels like the stitches are a little bit lower than where they were in the past. And the ball is wound tighter, which would certainly help lead to some offense. I don't know that anybody is going to admit to that or if indeed that is true, but that seems to be at least a thought of why we are seeing more home runs. Home runs way up this year, as are the three home run occurrences. And they also pointed out, too, Brian Dozier's red hot, and he got some pitches to hit. And he didn't miss him. And he's ahead in the count, two and one. Now three balls, one strike. And yet, there are reports, we don't know if they're true or not, but reports that Major League Baseball's solution is to shorten the strike zone. Three balls, two strikes. Shrink the strike zone. <laughs> That's not going to help anything. You call more strikes, you move the game along quicker. How about that changeup? Look at Salvi checking him out. He's saying, all right, what are you thinking here? Three and two? Don't throw him a fastball. Thank you. Put it down. Walk him if you have to. That'll work. Paul Orlando calls off Mondesi. Two down. So there's a, a feeling of a lack of offense. And maybe fewer runs scored. Even if home runs have spiked. Two seasons ago, there were, what, 1,100 fewer home runs. Right? 700 fewer home runs last year. And now they want to make the strike zone smaller? Well, just 
let it happen. Twins, Two and zero on Polanco. Twins, they don't have a problem scoring runs. It's just giving them up. It's been their problem. Their offense is good. Two and one, and they've had some trouble scoring runs without hitting a home run. They scored five runs yesterday, and four of those by way of a home run. They have scored three runs in the first two innings tonight, and all three have been solo home runs against Dylan G. Runs. Three solo home runs hit by Minnesota and a two run home run hit by Kendrys Morales. Number nine hitter Raul Mondesi against Irvin Santana chased a high fastball. Mondesi got yesterday off. But Merrifield batted ninth and played at second base. Fastballs inside one ball one strike. Third baseman Eduardo Escobar, he's crashing. But look, this is where he wants to bunt the ball, right there. Right field. There's that overhang out there, remember? Not quite deep enough, and Kepler makes a play on the warning track. That was a nod to old Tiger Stadium. In right field where the second deck actually would hang out over the lower deck you could put your back up against the wall in right field at Tiger Stadium look up and the second deck would be hanging out over. Yeah. Yeah it was a fun place to play. Especially to hit it was a launching pad. Slider for a strike to Dyson he lined out to center field his first time up. Kepler in the right center field, two down. Our University of Kansas Hospital injury report. Dallas Keuchel may not return to the Houston Astros. Has some problems with his left shoulder. It's been a struggle for most of the year after winning the Cy Young last year and was starting to put it back together in August and into September, but. He could be shut down. Maybe there's a case of thoracic syndrome. Outlet syndrome. Is that how they say that? New term, another new term. 
Houston leads Cleveland by the way. Top of the sixth inning 4 1. Royals got their hands full with Santana. He he repeats his delivery. His mechanics are flawless. He's a veteran that's gotten even better. Very smooth with his delivery. To Dozier. And another hard hit out for Paulo Orlando. Change of thing. Great staying inside the ball. Beer Mazda of Overland Park game break. Dansby Swanson, first overall pick two drafts ago, gets his first major league home run, and it's an inside the park home run. Off of Gio Gonzalez at Washington. What was worth the left fielder doing? The right fielder picked up that ball. Saw one of those the other night, didn't we? Yeah, it was against uh, uh, Toronto. Yeah, it was Melvin Upton. Yep, was the center fielder. And sometimes you become a spectator and you watch, and the next thing you know, you're going, "Oh no, I should have been there." Dylan G allowed a home run to Brian Dozier in the first, then Polanco reached with an infield single, and then Dylan got Joe Mauer to ground into a double play. So. Little harm. One run, two outs, nobody on. But then Minnesota got another home run from Trevor Plouffe. And two more hits. Two runs, five hits in the first inning. And then Rosario homered leading off the second. So Minnesota's hit three home runs off of Dylan G. He's had a tough time keeping the ball in the ballpark here at Target Field. He has given up at Target Field this year. Nine home runs in 11 and a third innings. Four to Dozier. But fortunately for him tonight, all three home runs are solo home runs, so the Royals are down by one. Rounded to Hosmer. He swings around through foul territory and takes care of Maurer. One out. Don't miss the opportunity to bring your company, school, sports team, or other group out to Coffin Stadium. Royals group tickets are available with discounted rates, starting with the purchase of 20 or more tickets. Contact the Royals group sales department at the number on your screen. Or you can email group sales at royals.com for more information. We are down to our last two regular season homestands. 
Dan Gladden. Two time world champion. Twins outfielder. Is assaulting his radio partner Corey Provis. Dan Glad made a terrific play at Kauffman Stadium with his glove. With his glove. Yep. <laughs> and and apparently, he just whiffed one right in front of the home crowd. He did. He had it. He had it lined up. Watch him. Look at that. Right at the snow cone. Oh. Oh. Look at Corey. Kloof muscles it out into shallow left field, and he's on with one out. That's one thing to miss a ball like that with your bare hands. That's right. But when you got your glove on, and you have your glove on for that very reason. Break yeah. this down, Hud. Yeah, you know, he's in great feeling position. He reaches out over. He's got plenty of coverage, he thinks, but he couldn't finish it. He couldn't close off the glove. He, he recoiled too quickly. He glad man. Ball one to Max Kepler. He was a really good player. Dan Glad. Hard nose. Better believe it. He played he played the game the right way. Hustled. Outstanding outfielder. Giants, twins. Leadoff man. Mm -hmm. Just put him anywhere. Versatile. He scored the most famous run in Minnesota Twins history. That was in on Kepler's knuckles. Kloof goes to tag, but he's just trying to force a throw. And there are two down. Game seven of the 1991 World Series. A 0-0 tie going into the 10th inning. And Gene Larkin won it with a base hit. Scoring Dan Gladden, Minnesota beat Atlanta in seven games. Seven seasons with 20 or more stolen bases. Yep. Strong throwing arm in the outfield. Speed. Upstairs to Eduardo Escobar. He's one for one. Gladden's a Fresno State Bulldog. You guys the same age? No, he's a little bit older than me. I think. Okay. Do you remember him when you were a kid? I do. At Fresno State. I used to work out there okay. in the winter, in the off seasons. Here we go. Okay, here it is. Gene Larkin with the outfield and the infield in. There's Dan Gladden, and waiting for him in the jacket is Jack Morris, who pitched all ten innings for Minnesota in Game Seven. On to see throws out Escobar. And that's it for the Twins in the bottom of the third.
two innings. And now a scoreless frame. Irvin Santana and Dylan G. Royals won yesterday 11 5. Royals have won four consecutive season series with Minnesota. They've won five straight individual series going back to last year. And if they win one of the next two games, that'd be six straight winning series against the Twins. Now, people here in Minnesota will say, hey, come on, give us a break. But Royals fans will remember a decade of frustration for the Royals against Minnesota. So yeah. this is payback. That's right. 0 oh, and 2 on Hosmer. He really had a key plate appearance in the first inning. He came up with two outs and nobody on. He was down one and two. Reached with a walk in front of Morales' two run home run. Slider changeup. Back to back pitches here. Yeah, I mean, Hosmer getting his walks. 52nd. Leads the Royals. Still one and two. Santana keeping the ball down. Mm -hmm. Slider moves straight down. No lateral movement. Talk to him about about his slider. He, when he was with the Angels and he broke in in 06, 07, 08, his slider had a little more lateral break to it. It didn't have that downward action. And I asked him why is why are you working it down now? He says I'm smarter, I'm older, and more experienced. I know exactly where to put it. I said, well, what are your keys to beat the Royals? He said, I'm going to throw him strikes. I'm coming right after him. Strikes. That's how you win games. You take your chances that they hit it at your defense. That's why you got seven guys playing behind you. He's matured. He knows. He knows how to pitch. He has much better body language now than he did when he was a young player with the Angels. Much better. And they all go through it. We've witnessed it here with our young pitchers, and it went from boys to men. In a few years. Hosmer. Line drive left field. Rosario tried to short hop it. Hosmer's digging for second. And he's out. Well, Rosario hesitated on contact. That's a beautiful swing by Hosmer. Hesitated on contact, then he panicked and says, "I got to keep the ball in front of me." So he's so he's able to do that, and he baited Haas into taking the second base. And he, he he circled around it, tried to keep it in front, got to his feet. Watch how quickly he throws it. He just fires it. perfect throw. That's a blind throw. I mean, right. he didn't line up his target at all. That was a good feel for where second base was. Outside to Kendry's Morales. Fourth outfield assist for Rosario. Look at this. Yeah, no look. He just spun, but look where it bounced. Put it right where he wanted it. Fouled off of Suzuki's glove or arm. But I love the swing by Hosmer. He can tell Santana's not going to give him anything good to hit. So he's thinking away and he, he shot it that way. Now we were talking about different ways that hitters load up their hips. Some flamingo style load the hip. Morales uses two types. And that home run he used a toe tap and a leg load. So he toe tapped and then lifted up his leg and loaded and didn't he unload. I mean that one was further than the one he hit yesterday. Two and two. Watch the side angle now. Watch his toe. Watch his watch his foot right here. He's going to toe tap, tap once, and flamingo kick. Bam! Lift off. Nice play. Morales has hit four home runs in his last nine games. 
twenty three home runs. Twenty four home runs now. Surpasses his total with the Royals last year by two. Third strikeout for Santana. Change up there, very effective. Yesterday the change up wasn't there. It was belt high. And look what he did. Made a deposit. Didn't go quite as far. Bounced once, twice, left the ballpark. Tonight, his home run had more height. He got up underneath it. Now watch it hits the top of the garbage can. Garbage can shot kick out the ballpark. There goes the usher. Second one that left target field. Chopped out to Polanco. And Santana has three straight scoreless innings since giving up the home run to Morales. Hopefully, three to two, Twins winning here on September sixth, and we want to wish a very happy birthday. Martin Morgenstern, who lives in in Kansas, is a hundred two years old today. Watches every single Royals fan. Great Ben, Kansas, a World War II vet, and he watches every game. So we want to wish Morgan a happy or Martin a happy birthday. Martin Morgenstern, and we wanted to get that in early because I'm told that he watches every night. Sometimes falls asleep and doesn't make it to the end. And at 102, that's okay. That's the best part about watching sports on TV, right? You can watch the game, you can go in and out of a nap. <laughs> Suzuki lines it to center through the raindrops. And that just started after the end of the bottom of the third inning. So some fans are walking up the aisles to take cover, looking at the radar. This some patchy light rain. No storms appear to be on their way to Minneapolis, so we'll just deal with this for a few innings. Yeah, but Suzuki, he, he looked off balance, but he barreled that ball, and, and Gerard wasn't able to tell how hard it was hit, but he did a good job of staying locked on that liner. Didn't get over his head in the rain. Rosario homered against Dylan G. <laughs> Leading off the second inning, hit it just inside the left field foul pole and just over the left field wall. Good change up. One and two. See that ball was up and away. Had good level swing. Plays off the change up two and two. Foul tip and a strikeout. And now Dylan G has set down eight of the last nine. As 
his second strikeout tonight. Yeah, but he's missing off the plate now. He's getting his command. Two down to Byron Buxton. Jammed. Shallow center. Dyson catches up to it. Three up, three down for G for the first time tonight. So both pitchers have stabilized after all the fireworks in the first two innings. 3 2 Minnesota. Never. Here's our greater coverage of baseball brought to you by T-Mobile. Talking about second baseman who can hit home runs. Rugnet Odor, player of the week. He has 30 for the Rangers. The Mets are surging. One game back in the wild card. But they're without Neil Walker for the rest of the year. On the disabled list with a back injury. And Justin Upton is helping erase a miserable beginning to his career with the Detroit Tigers. He had a big home run against the White Sox yesterday. He's warming up at the right time. He's hitting them to all fields. Making him dangerous. That one he hit, that one he hit off of Soria, the right center at the cave was impressive. Second game in a row, he's hit a big home run late. Alex struck out looking at a fastball first time up. And now he's ahead in the count, 3-0. Santana has retired nine of the last ten. Dylan G has retired nine of the last ten. Full count. Cuthbert and Escobar will follow Gordon. Urban is executing some nice pitches now. Everything down, and just like he said, I'm throwing strikes. Alex takes a leadoff walk. Santana's second. Fans, the weekend starts early because every Thursday home game is Buck Night. Come enjoy Royals baseball while saving some hard-earned cash. Enjoy delicious hot dogs, peanuts for just a dollar apiece. Get your tickets now for Thursday Buck Nights at the K by calling 1-800-6-ROYALS or online at royals.com slash promotions. Ouch. He got jammed and he fouled it off of his leg. He's grabbing the area around his knee. Not good. The inside of his left knee. Is that where it got him? Hard running sinker in. Got him on the shin. Look where the ball bounced. 
can always tell if you got hit flush or not by where the ball bounces and it didn't go very far it means he took a, a majority of that shot. Inside pitch, turn on it, you turn on it on your knee, you're inside of it. It's going to stay in. Chesler lined to center field his first time up. Might seem cool, but lots of times the pitcher comes right back there in that same spot. And Santana just balked. And I don't know why. Alex Gordon was just taking his lead. Off of first base didn't appear to any do anything to try and distract Santana but he was and he just kind of buckled trying to disengage from the rubber. Oh he wanted to go to the stretch. <laughs> yeah look he knows. He moved before he stepped off. There it was stepped off with the wrong foot. Same pitch see that came right back there testing him to swing at that. And after you just foul that ball off your leg like that you're not going to swing. Alex to third. Safe. Escobar tells the Twins dugout to take another look. Reverend Ted Barrett, third base umpire tonight, was right on top of it. Let's see. Alex went from the standstill, didn't get a walking lead, but did he get his left hand in there? Yep, you see the bag lift up. Ted standing right there. Watch the hand hit the bag. Safe. Twins still have not made a decision. I'm going to go ahead and give him his seventh steal. Thank you. They will not challenge. There you go. Slash and dash. We talked about that as one of the keys. Our Golden Oak lending keys to the game. Steal. Rip them off. Suzuki Three. wasn't happy. Three and one on Cuthbert. The only runner that Suzuki has thrown out during that stretch was Ray Fuentes back in April. Who was designated for assignment by the Royals today. Three and two on Cuthbert. Irvin staying inside on Cuthbert. Everything. Doesn't want him to get his hands out, uh, extended as he did in his last at bat. He hit a line drive missile to the center fielder. Stayed inside on a slider. So he's lo looking for the slider out there, and Irvin's not giving it to him. He wants to get one airborne. Oh. Santana comes back from three and one to strike him out. Ball four if he'd let him. Look at all those pitches inside. You know, you're talking about the different tilt on his slider now. That's more like a curveball than it is a slider. It almost looks like it. So runner at third, one out to Escobar. It off of his foot. Three last hitters have all fouled balls off of their bodies, and that's because it's inside. Now look at the slider. See how it just drops straight down. Tough. Cuthbert, he wanted to knock that run in, in the worst way. Escobar takes inside. He flied to center in the second inning. Eski is driven in at least one run in seven of his last nine games. He has a 13 game hitting streak. And he's driven in more runs against the Twins than any other team in his career. And Suzuki just saved a run two balls one strike.
Vote for the Royals Player of the Month at one of the seven Rally House locations in the KC metro area. All participants will be entered to win a majestic prize pack. Stay up the middle with your approach. There's a big hole there with the infield in. Popped up. Two outs. Well, like we said in Irvin Santana's last start against the White Sox, he gave up a season high 11 hits, but he stranded 10 runners because he executed and he made some good pitches. And he was able to keep them in the game. And they ended up winning it. He's doing that here with these last two batters, making the hitters swing at his pitches. Right. Yeah, you really have to define good pitches there because those aren't strikes. Uh -huh. But he made at least three balls in that at bat appear to be strikes. Yeah. Inside to Mondesi, he flied out to right field in the third inning. <laughs> That's a strike, and it's one and one. Well, that's what, we're, what I'm saying. Last five games, look at he he bears down. That goes along with his veteran savvy. Knows how to execute. And like you said, he's making the pitches look like they're good pitches, but they're not. And if it's not on over the plate, you're going to either get jammed or swing and miss. Two and two. You know, Mondesi, he's such a great bunter. And that's one thing that he could do up here to keep his head above water. Okay, I thought he might try one, a bunt to Plouffe. With a runner at third base, when he's up every time, he should be thinking about bunt. He's going to make it close at first and score the run. He's having a hard time finding his swing. And they knew this would happen. Full count. And there's no shame in bunting every time up. Or at least twice a game. Right now, keep his head above water. And get his legs on base. Right. And score the run. That's his best asset right now. Right. Royals had a runner at third with nobody out. Santana gets a strikeout, a foul out, and another strikeout. Oh. If they could just walk, just take a pinch.
and we go to work on our sprint trivia question. Who are the three players to hit 40 home runs as a second baseman? Three second basemen in history have hit 40 home runs. This is easy. Well, let's go. Fire away. Hey. Sandberg has one. I think I know the trick part. Dan Ugla. No. Jeff Kent. No. Rogers Hornsby as a second baseman. How about that? Pulled out a Rogers Hornsby. Yeah, that's game. pretty good. Thank you. Got one more. Mm -hmm. One and one on Polanco. Two on Polanco. He has an infield single and he's grounded out to first base. <laughs> two and two. Okay, so we got two. We need one more. What what year was it? Easy? Oh, well, you said it was easy. Well, no, we're going to get it. I'm, uh, what do we have to get this inning? If it's easy, typically you don't need a lot of time. As Alex retires Polanco, two down. How about Davey Johnson? Ding, ding. Question over. Let's go. Next question. Can we do another one? Don't, you know, you get cocky like that, <laughs> and you know what the guys in the truck are going to do. You know? They all st steady, uh, steady high and lower. There you go. Strike to Joe Maurer. He has grounded out twice. Good, nice work. Yeah, Graves had three guys that had 40 home runs on that team. Evans was one, and who was the other one? Hank Aaron. I don't know if Hank. But they had a power team there. Jogs in and Dylan G. All right. Three up, three down. He has now retired eight in a row.
Five runs and four home runs in the first two innings. Nothing since. Dyson lines it into left center field. Don't he try. takes an aggressive turn but holds. Dyson's one for three. The Royals have their leadoff man on in a third straight inning. And Trevor Plouffe almost got in Dyson's way now. Now Gerard, he's going to hold on to, but Plouffe became a, a spectator. Almost got run over. Orlando is 0 for 2. One of his outs it was a sharp one hopper to Dozier at second base. Our Sonic Slamming in contestant is Joshua Wheatley from Olathe. If the Royals hit a home run out of the park in this inning, Joshua wins $3,600. Follow Bunts foul. Royals hit a grand slam out of the park. Joshua wins 25 grand from Sonic and the Royals. I wish Paulo would swing away here. He's been hitting the ball hard. Just having bad luck. He could hit a gapper and score Dyson with one swing. Ploof, he's standing there and he, he's throwing the ball back to Santana. Then he tried the fake. Where he faked through and hoping Dyson would come off the base and he was going to get him, but Dyson didn't fall for it. 0 oh 2 on Paulo. Fastball slider changeups, what Urban's using against the Royals. Now he's making them swing at his pitches. Could have had a couple of walks easy that last inning. Loaded him up. Got him in more trouble. Gordon was at third with nobody out. Couldn't get him home. Like a few Royals, loves hitting here at Target Field. Not this oh. throw is wide. So Dozier's throw pulled Ploof off the bag. Dyson's out at second base. Good feed. Let him see the ball the whole way. No excuse for Dozier pulling that one. That might. Turn into a Royals rally. Who knows? Eric Hosmer has walked and scored, and he singled to left field. He tried to stretch that single into a double and was gunned down by the left fielder, Rosario. First, you could hear Rusty Koontz in St. Paul with him yelling back as he saw Suzuki getting into a throwing motion. Yep. They call that position sometimes the get back coach. Two and oh. He pitched Hosmer very carefully. His last time up. Now he tried to the first time. Haas milked a walk, but he hit a line drive base hit to left field his last time up. Haas on a pitch that was that far outside, making him seven for 20 against Irvin Lifetime, hitting 350. But you know, they do make mistakes. That's what you look for. Fastball coming in here. If it just doesn't come in, it leaks out over the middle. Haas needs to jump on it. Stayed in. Great pitch. Most of his fastballs today have either been 
on the edge of the strike zone or I was going to say just off the edge of the strike zone. That was quite a ways inside. But all those pitches that he made to Escobar when he got Escobar to pop out last half inning all just outside the border of the strike zone. And you got to credit him for that. He hasn't made any mistakes. Follow 11 for 13 in steals. Delayed steal. And Paulo is safe. And he's on his way to third with one out. Another stolen base for the Royals against Suzuki. Slash and dash. This time it was uh, the, the delay version, which is a good thing. Uh, Paulo does that a lot. One, two, three crow hops and turn and go. You either get a, a catcher sleeping or an in, infielder. And then the fact that he slid and got up quickly, able to advance the third base, gives the Royals another chance to get a runner home with less than two. So the pressure on Irvin, not necessarily with the hits, only got three hits off of him. Don't chase. Two down. That time he threw a, a slower slider. Change the speed on it. Or at least it appeared that way because his eyes were down on a knee with that swing. Yeah, just not picking it up. So Santana, who got around a runner at third and nobody out last inning. Trying to work around a runner at third and one out. And he got a bad swing from Kendry's Morales. Everything off of the plate. Now, Irvin has thrown nine wild pitches. Hate to start begging and bringing up that stat. But if he bounces it, be ready to score. Suzuki saves a tenth wild pitch. at third with one out. Now standing there with two down. Morales is homered and struck out against Santana tonight. Two and one. Royals made an adjustment against Barrios yesterday. Barrios started throwing his changeup a lot. And Morales hit a home run on a changeup. And I imagine word is going to spread at some point. Hey, look, he's not throwing his fastball for a strike. You'd hope it got there he catches the inside corner there but he doesn't want to let Morales get extended he's going to try to tie him up with some heaters in and that's right on the edge almost hit the bag Santana does it again nickname is magic and that's what he's been tonight with runners in scoring position
there's a face and a name that we have never said before. James Beresford, 27 year old, getting his first big league call up today for the Minnesota Twins. Joel Goldberg here at Target Field. This is an interesting story as he, when he came to the park today, had a bunch of balloons at his locker. Those balloons were sent to him from Peter Moylan as a congratulations. Beresford is from Australia, and Moylan says he's known the kid forever. He's a 27-year-old infielder that has been in the minor leagues for 10 years. Nice quick ground ball to Alcides Escobar for the first out of the inning. And the two of them have known each other a long time from back home in Melbourne. They played in the Australian League for the Melbourne Aces together. And Peter said that he had never faced him professionally, but came close last year. He said he was pitching for Triple-A Gwinnett with the Braves system and facing Rochester, the Triple-A affiliate for the Twins. He was in. He gave up a single. The next batter was Beresford. He was ready for that Battle of Aussies, and the manager pulled him for a lefty to come in. He said to the manager, you just crushed the dreams of Australian baseball fans, all 12 of them. But Peter, very happy for his friend. He said he's going to send over a little something else when he has some time, but very excited to see the kid. And Hud, I think you can relate. Ten years grinding in the minor leagues. Oh, you know what? The only thing I got over him is I got a call up sooner. I was 22, but then went back down again. And just that shuttle from between AAA and the majors was tough. But this young man has, has never even sniffed a big league day, and today's his day. I went in early to shake his hand and congratulate him. It's hard work. There it is. Minor league total games. Guys that played a long time, and that's why you're seeing these Paulo and Whit Merrifield. They know how to play the game when they get up here. You play so much in the minor leagues, you know you're those games. You learn a lot, and you get better. So Tough hop. Close but out. Two down to the bottom of the sixth inning. Of those nine hundred and sixty-three minor league games for you, how many? You had to estimate how many. Before you got called up for the first time, because say, all the other ones, yeah. they had never been called up, or yeah. at least for Merrifield, but they had never really been called up before that. I played five years of minor league. Five before. full seasons. Yeah. Well, rookie season was half season. Okay, so four and a half. We're talking what about? 140 games. Had an idea, but I was a, I was a number one pick. I had speed, so they brought me up. You know, courtesy. It wasn't that I was just tearing up the minor leagues, but whenever you're a number one pick, that helps a lot. That helps if you're a high pick. I'm so fortunate because I would have been buried like the other ones had I not been a, a, a top pick and they invested money in me. So Holtz estimates it was about 600 minor league games before you called up for the first time. Yeah. So then called up and then sent back down, played. 360 some odd minor league games after that. That's tough. You know what? Sometimes you're you're with the, in the wrong place at the wrong time with the organization, and it's hard to get out. So you just got to persevere and hang in there and keep pushing, and play for those scouts that are in the stands, hoping that somebody writes your name on their paper and they like you. Ooh, good not good backdoor slider. Still three and two. A reminder as you enjoy a cold one, look forward to Miller time later in tonight's game, brought to you by Miller Lite. at center field second base hit to center field for Escobar Dylan G had set down 15 out of 16 for that base hit so he's recovered after allowing three home runs to the first eight batters that he faced tonight Alexander continues to warm up in the Royals bullpen Did you notice that Suzuki laid his bat down to measure where he was standing compared to the plate? You don't see that very often. 
first hitter I remember seeing do that, at least the one that comes to mind, is Bernie Williams. Okay, watch him. So he's gonna he's gonna measure. He's say, okay, this is about where I stand right here. All right. Yep. Find that toe hold. It's important. Comfort. Be comfortable when you're standing there waiting for that pitch. Two and zero. Suzuki be a free agent at the end of the season. Foul off the left field line. Well played by the ball boy. You got some aggressive ball boys here, mm -hmm. but nothing like Oakland. You see that play in the highlights? Yeah. That kid just just laid out from that ball and bounced off, hit, hit one of the relievers in the head. He's been doing that all year too. Yeah. Some of these guys are auditioning for some scouts too. They want to get signed. Room in foul ground, and that's the inning. Four consecutive scoreless innings for Dylan G. America. Life's better when we're connected. Downtown Minneapolis aglow on a not a hot but a warm muggy night. Dylan G appears to be done. Getting congratulations from his teammates. He gave up three runs to the first eight hitters. Three solo home runs. And finished by retiring 15 of the last 17 hitters. Oh, he rebounded nicely, kept his team in the game. Royals have had opportunities. Irvin Santana being stingy, making the Royals swing at his pitches off the plate. That's what he wants to do. Ouch. Well, you could hear that smack all the way up here. It's the eighth time he's been hit this year. Ties Alex Gordon. It's a category you don't want to have a lot of numbers. Wrist is the worst place for a hitter to get hit. 
all those little bones in there. Oh man, it's worse. I mean, look what Lorenzo Cain's wrist has done to him. And Salvi's going to be done. Better get a picture of that. So he's coming into it. Starting to bring his hands in. Ooh, man. Tough spot. Right below the hand. What the heck? How about Gore to score early in the game? Yeah, why there not? we go. There you go. You want to hit our catcher? Have fun with Terrence Gore. That's right. <laughs> Santana's thinking, darn, I should have just walked him if I was going to put him on. It'd still be Salvador Perez out there. Yeah, but you hope Salvi's all right. Close over at first base. Now, Terrence Gore didn't have a long time to get loose like he normally does. Looked a little slow getting back to the back there. Let's see. Yeah, good point. He's probably thinking eighth, ninth, mm -hmm. later innings. Right, that's his specialty. He's not getting loose that time of the game to pinch hit. Alex has struck out and walked. He stole a base against Irvin Santana in the fifth inning. He stole third with nobody out. The Royals have had the leadoff man on in four straight innings. They haven't scored in any of those innings yet. In the fourth, Hosmer singled to left, tried to turn it into a double and was thrown out at second base. Gordon walked in the fifth, got to third with nobody out. And then Dyson opened the sixth with a single. Salvador Perez get by a pitch in the seventh. Well, you know, with Gore over there, that's going to give Alex some fastballs. But, but Irvin, the way he's had command with that fastball, he's making it tough on him. Here he goes. And Gore hangs on as he slid over the bag. It's three stolen bases for the Royals against Kurt Suzuki tonight. Score five for five this season. He don't need to loosen up. He probably gets out of bed loose in the morning when he gets up. He's ready to run. So runner at second, nobody out. Pitch that may have been a rare pitch that may have been out over the plate from Santana tonight. I was just going to say that's the best pitch Gordon's seen in his three times up now. Just about any any hitter has seen tonight. Right. Yep. Royals have stolen a base in eight consecutive games. The shortstop. Polanco made a move for second base and ran all the way to the bag. Santana didn't throw. Polanco went back to his position. And then Santana backed off. Great stop by Suzuki. Gore's a game changer when he gets out there. We all know that. They know it too. And that he turned his thumbs out, caught that right in the glove. Good, good pick. Another stop. Three and two. This is the time to get him. Third time through. He just uh, he made a pitch, a bad pitch to Alex. He fouled it off and missed it. So now start looking for the mistake. This is where Santana has been really good tonight. Three, two sliders down and out of the strike zone. Fastball walked him. Two on, nobody out. And 
Paul Molitor comes out. 99 pitches for Santana. I mean, even by today's standard, that's not too high. And Paul Molitor looks like he's about to turn it over to his beleaguered and mostly ineffective bullpen. Thank you. Yes. Thanks for getting him out. And Santana's frustrated because he opened the inning with a hit batter and a walk. Ryan Presley is a Chevy call to the bullpen. is brought to you by the Missouri Lottery. Every ticket you play gives back to schools across Missouri. So play it forward with the Missouri Lottery. By Menards, save big money at Menards on all your home improvement needs. And by your Midwest Ford dealers, visit your MidwestFordDealers.com. That's like Paul Molitor shaking hands with the Royals by getting Urban Santana out of there. And bringing in Ryan Presley. Nice. Line drive nice. caught in left field by Rosario. So Cuthbert is out. Now Paul Molitor knows his players better than we do, but Urban Santana, 99 pitches. He had allowed three hits in six plus innings. Lower third of the order coming up. Who were a combined 0 for 6 against him. And he brings in Ryan Presley, who may get the job done. Who knows? But that's got to give the Royals an emotional lift. It does. Ball was hit hard there, too bad. He couldn't get that ball down. Rosario with a nice play out there, but Irvin Santana obviously visibly ups upset. Didn't want to come out of this one. Presley, 90 to 95 with his fastball curve and a change. Slider taken for a strike. Eski thought it was a little low. He talks it over with Chris Siegel. Eski was 0 for 2 against Santana. Borderline. And now timeout called as a ball is jumped out of one of the bullpens out in left center field. Look at that. 8 for 13. Had some good numbers against Presley. Presley has inherited 30 runners this year as a reliever. So come into the game and a combined 30 runners have been on base and almost half of those have scored 13 of the 30. Escobar lays off the slider. One ball, one strike. Well, Molitor, he, he uses Ryan Presley more than any of his relievers. He leads the Twins in relief innings, and he's third in the American League in innings. Tied for second 
in appearances. He's a guy he goes to. Off the end of the bat, down for a base hit. Gore is going to come to the plate. Rosario's throw is offline. The game is tied. And Alcides Escobar not only extends his hitting streak, but he's driven in 13 runs in his last 14 games. Fantastic job of seeing him up, Presley. Yes. Fortunately, gave up one of Irvin's runs there, and that's what why Santana didn't want to leave. He's got the bottom third. You know, those are his runs. He might as well give them up. That's what his he's thinking there. But that slider stayed up, and Eski made him pay. And again, Terrence Gore to score. He's hit in 14 in a row, three shy of his career best. And it's the second longest current hitting streak in the major leagues. And now we get a chance to see Daniel Nava in a Royals uniform for the first time. Signed to a minor league contract a few weeks ago. Sixth big league season. He's played in 500 major league games and gives Ned Yost a veteran bat off the bench for situations just like this one. Fastball for a strike. Nava started with the Angels this year and had some injury issues. He was on the disabled list twice in April with a left knee problem and in May with a left groin issue. No balls, two strikes. Seven for 52 in his career as a pinch hitter. And when you pinch hit and you don't swing early in the count, you haven't swung and gauged your swing on his pitch, it's already 0 and 2. So it makes it even more tough. Toughest job there is is to pinch hit. You want to swing early as you can. Still no balls, two strikes. He's off the slider. One and two. That's what he's got to do. Falling behind like that, he's got to be able to get a, a decent pitch he can handle. He's got a good short compact swing. He's got some pop. But this is going to be his role, and it's not too many pinch hit opportunities. But with Mondesi in the game, you're going to see that more with runners out there, especially with the Royals. And they're back against the wall right now. Santana hat didn't throw a pitch like this the whole time he was in there. Nava is still listed as a switch hitter, but in his last two seasons, he's been batting primarily left handed, and that bat here or there. And Ned Yosin talking about Nava talked about him as a left hand bat off the bench. Showing a good eye. Two balls, two strikes. He has just one plate appearance all this year as a right hand batter. Yeah, so you might as well just stay on that one spot as little as you're getting playing time. Santana's just staring off into space as he. He's torturing himself probably for the first two hitters of this inning. Especially after he gives up a hit here. Still two and two. Okay, had some nice swings. Daniel Nava 
had maybe the best imaginable first big league at bat. It's only been twice in Major League history that someone comes to the plate for the first time as a big leaguer and hits a grand slam. And he did it on the very first pitch that he saw. That was against Joe Blanton. How about that? Played briefly for the Royals. That's special. Grounded foul. The only other player who hit a grand slam in his first big league at bat on the first pitch was Kevin Kuzminoff. That was in 2006. Wow. I mean, where do you go from there? I don't know. <laughs> That's pretty impressive. Get in the box, and you're nervous. First and pitch. the bases are loaded. Uh, oh my gosh! I don't want to mess this up. Right. Whack. <laughs> well, he's got the kind of plate appearance going right now that you want as a pinch hitter. You get to see more pitches by having at bats like this. He's fouling them off, and Presley, he's making Presley throw him a strike. Drilled to right field. Kepler is there. Makes the play on the track. That was a heck of an at bat. Finally got a good pitch to hit. Hit it hard to deep right field. That's a kind of better net bat than Ed Yost was talking about. Better believe it. Nothing wrong with that one. There's Eddie Rosario in left field. Now last year he hit a home run on the first pitch that he saw in the big leagues against Scott Casimir. But it was not a grand slam. <laughs> Too bad. Send him back. Buddy Boshears is a Chevy call to the bullpen. The Royals, one of just four teams in the big leagues that have at least four players hitting better than 300 with runners in scoring position. And it's Paulo Orlando, Lorenzo Kane, Eric Hosmer, and now Gerard Dyson hitting at 302. And he bats with runners at first and second and two down. Old buddy Boshears. 27th appearance. ERA over five. Back to the top of the order. Oh, and one on Dyson. Talked about Dyson's average with runners in scoring position. Creeped up over 300 at 302, but look at that. That's why Merrifield's not hitting this spot. He's hitting 375 off a of lefties. 
Boshier's 88 to 94 fastball curve change. Curveballs inside, one and one. Urban Santana had allowed three hits in his first six innings, none since the first. He hit Salvador Perez, and then he walked Alex Gordon. And with 99 pitches, Paul Molitor turned it over to the Minnesota bullpen. One and two. It's hard to pull that curve. Just wants a way to click longer, try to shoot that ball to left field. He didn't just hit Salvador Perez, he put him out of the game. Terrence Gore ran for him. And scored on Escobar's single to left. Fastball. So he set him up with the breaking balls, strikes him up with a fastball. But the Royals tie the game. Alcides Escobar has a 14 game hitting streak with this RBI single. It is stretch time in Minneapolis in a 3 3 tie. Tire. Now, see this Escobar is not playing that way. He has not had one game off all season. And he has a 14 game hitting streak and he tied the game with a single in the top of the seventh inning. Drew Butera takes over behind the plate because Salvador Perez was drilled by Urban Santana to begin the top of the seventh. Yeah, got him right below the wrist. Boy, you just hope that there's no damage done in there. Get pictures of it. With Merrifield it is at second base as Daniel Nava hit for Mondesi, and now Joaquim Soria comes on in the bottom of the seventh inning. He'll get Rosario, Buxton, and Dozier. Dylan G gave up three home runs to the first eight batters that he faced, and then he finished by retiring. 15 of the last 17. And nice job keeping the team in the game after that rough first couple of innings there. That's all you can ask. Good change up. One and two on Rosario. He's got four or five pitches. He's that change up. He also has a, a split finger change up that he uses. That's a good pitch. Uses that to get him to chase. Fastball slider curve. Slow curve sometimes. Off the plate. Tough play. Oh, got him. 
time at first. That is a gold glove play. All the way with a speedy runner like Rosario from the left side of the plate. That topper. Oh, man. Escobar attacked this ball. He got to it before Cutford did. That is playing with a sense of urgency right there. Nice play. I mean, you can't go wrong. You bobble that at all, that's, that's a no chance to get him. That guy with great speed, beautiful. You wear the gold glove in this league, that's saying something. There it is. Now Byron Buxton. Soria fell down and threw a strike. Soria waves off the Royals dugout. Says he's fine. A little, little bit of rain here this evening. His front knee buckled. Oh, there's a slip. Clean the bottom of those spikes off. There's the slow curve. 0 and 2 on Buxton, who was struck out and fly to center. Yeah, there's a, there's a spike cleaner right there. Three pitches and a strikeout, two down. The Royals alumni batting practice at Kauffman Stadium is back. Come join Royals alumni as you take batting practice on the field like the pros. The cost is $300 and you'll receive a t-shirt and shorts along with an autographed baseball by the alumni who attend. You must be 25 years or older to participate Saturday, September 24th, 9 a.m. noon or 1 p.m. to 4. Call 1-800-504-4150 to sign up today. Want to take some BP, Rhino? No. Okay. You look good the only time I've seen you. Yeah, that was once every five years. That was impressive. I don't want to overexpose myself. No. Yeah, nice swing work. So Brian Dozier's at the plate, who's hitting home runs night right now like they're singles. And you have Jorge Polanco on deck. Dozier's homered in five straight games, seven of his last eight games. And he's hit 22 home runs in his last 36 games. That's probably all he's going to see. This is what he did in the first inning tonight. 2-0 count, two sliders before that, and he waited for it, and he got it. Dylan G gave it to him. Last night's homers went in the all three decks, first, second, and third. One hop to Escobar. Soria gets the job done, and we go to the eighth inning in a 3-3 tie.
Mazda of Overland Park game break. That is Manny Machado and a grand slam off of Joe Jake Odorizzi. That is 34 home runs this year for Manny Machado and the Baltimore Orioles continue to hang in there. Half game advantage over the Tigers in the wild card. They were tied going into tonight. The Tigers are down 2 0 to Chicago in the bottom of the seventh inning. Buddy Boshears stays on for the eighth. He'll get Paulo Orlando, Eric Hosmer, and Kendrys Morales. All right, Paulo hitting 325 with three of his four home runs off the of lefties. See if he can get something started. They're giving him the hole in the middle. I don't understand this. Defense. 0 oh 2. Polanco, the shortstop, he's playing Paulo way in the hole like he's a dead pole hitter. And all of his hits, Paulo, most of them are all in center field. And if you show their defensive alignment there, oh man, all day long. Two and two. Three pitch mix from Buddy Boshears. Signed out of an independent league by Minnesota. Nice. Caught it short. One down. Ladies, you don't want to miss out on Girls Night Out. It's next Friday, presented by your Kansas City area Chevy dealers. While the VIP packages are sold out, all fans can enjoy activities and entertainment that will take place prior to the game in the outfield experience. The first 10,000 ladies to walk through the gates receive this royal blue fabric sling bag, courtesy of your Kansas City area Chevy dealers. And proceeds from the event will benefit the American Heart Association Go Red for Women. Haas's expression told me throw it again. That was a good pitch to hit. Down and out of the strike zone. Three pitch strikeout. He did throw it again, except he made it better. Good spot. And with Kendris Morales coming up, Paul Molitor will go back to his bullpen, which has done the job so far. And getting outs, they did allow an inherited runner to score. But this is a bullpen that has really struggled in the last three weeks. Brandon Kinsler will come on to face Kendris Morales with two down.
Football is brought to you by your local Kansas City area Chevy dealers. Visit for great prices on the all new 2016 Malibu. By Panera Bread, food as it should be with 24 KC Metro locations. And by Academy Sports and Outdoors, right stuff, low price every day. Andrew Morales as a left hand batter hit a two run home run back in the first inning. Paul Molitor wants him to bat left handed against Kinsler instead of hitting right handed against Bo Shears. Brandon Kinsler on for the 46th time and he comes on with two outs and nobody on. How about that? 2.17 ERA. It's another guy he can trust to come in and get the job done. Fastball slider. Low to mid 90s. Straight as a string at Peter Luke. It's another player that has played in an independent league. Two fastballs and two strikes. Now he throws in the slider down and in. Do they have a super scout in the independent leagues or what? It's a lot of players. That they yeah, have four on their roster that yeah. at some point have played in an independent non-affiliated league. Ah. That's that's the lowest league you can be in. And now the Royals have one in Daniel Nava, who has a great story. Two balls, two strikes. There are players who are destined for the big leagues as soon as they are signed and an organization does everything they can to get them to the big leagues as quickly as possible. And then there's the story of perseverance of Daniel Nava. Yeah. Three balls, two strikes. It's cliche at times and yet for Nava the you know, he had to earn everything he has right it really applies to him mm -hmm. yeah I commend guys like that who never give up down there Kinsler he missed but he missed off the plate and away from him you don't want to ch challenge him anywhere in or up over Right where Suzuki was sitting. One guy over there on the left side of the infield, and Morales happened to hit it right to him. Escobar, the third baseman. And the Royals are down in order in the top of the eighth.
We're tied at three to the bottom of the eighth. Kendrys Morales made a two run home run with two outs against Irvin Santana. But Minnesota in the bottom of the first. Got two. They added a run in the third and then a scary moment as Salvador Perez was hit on the wrist. X-rays were negative. Terrence Gore running for him stole second and I'll see this Escobar got him home with a base hit. And that tied the game at three. It's great news that that Salvi X-ray was negative but then you wonder when the MRI is coming. That's when they were able to see the little tissue or the tendons and stuff around the bone. Hopefully there's nothing further. It's good news. Herrera one ball one strike against Polanco. Dylan G went six allowing three runs. Joaquin Soria faced three batters in the seventh and now Herrera gets Polanco Maurer and Plouffe. One and two. Big fastball. 98. 88 mile an hour change. Very nice slider. Change up struck him out. Panera takes us around the league. The Yankees hit three home runs against the Blue Jays. And they win 7-6 after taking two out of three from the Royals. The Yankees gaining some ground in the wild card. Houston beats Cleveland to help the Royals out in the division. And Chicago still leading Detroit in the bottom of the eighth. Ball one to Joe Maurer. is 0 for 3 tonight. And he's 0 for his last 19 against the Royals. 2 and 1. He's 2 for 6 off Herrera with a strikeout. Three and one. Powers on with one out. And that's the first walk tonight allowed by a Royals pitcher. Folks, the next T-shirt Tuesday giveaway will take place when the Royals host the Oakland A's next Tuesday. The first 10,000 fans through the gates will receive an exclusive Bo Jackson T-shirt presented by Metropolitan Community College. Get tickets today at royals.com slash T-shirt Tuesday. Logan Schaefer is going to run for Bauer with one out. Chat about Trevor Plouffe. Plouffe has hit one of the three Minnesota home runs. Three of the first eight Twins hitters homer tonight, but all solo home runs. And then Dylan Key retired 15 of the final 17 he faced. Yeah, Plouffe, he stayed right in there on that slider. Perfect swing.
Strike to Plouffe. Schaefer hasn't stolen a base since he's been called up. He's got good speed. I think Molly put him out there just in case Plouffe hits the gap. Butera, he's still not 27% of runners. He's got a good arm. Former Minnesota twin, Drew Butera. Drew is here 2010, 2011, 2012, 2013. Parts of four seasons here in Minnesota and was with the Dodgers for two seasons and the Angels and the Royals. Late swing and a foul ball. One ball, two strikes. And Plouffe cracked his bat. Or did he injure himself? Didn't want this. Look at that. Grimace tells it all. He was on the disabled list twice this year. Once for an abdominal strain and once for a fractured rib. So he's had some issues with his midsection and that's sure what it looked like. When you have a swing like that. Start bending over to the side. Yeah, that that was uh, looked painful. So Kenny Vargas will come to the plate against Calvin Herrera with the count one ball, two strikes. Well, tough time to step in. You got two strikes on you. If you strike out, it goes to Ploof on his record. If he gets a base hit, it's Vargas earned it. He didn't take much time to get loose, did he? No. Just this old fashioned league what the here. Heck? Just Grab a bat, a couple of swings. Here we go. Keep it simple. Peter coming. Dyson comes up and makes a play in center field. Two down. Ball at 94. Kepler was as good as any American League hitter in July and into early August, hitting a lot of home runs. He's hit 16 as a part time player this year. But the league has adjusted to him, and it's really been a struggle for most of August and now into September. It's a scoreless eight for Kelvin Herrera, so we head to the ninth in a 3 3 tie.
inning. So far the Minnesota bullpen has done its job. That has not been the case for most of this year and especially lately are quick and loans rocket arms. Minnesota bullpen in the last 11 games has a 7.68 ERA. OK let's get her done. The Royals scored six against the bullpen yesterday afternoon. Brandon Kinsler got the final out of the eighth inning. Strike to Whit Merrifield. This is his first at bat. Whit started at second base yesterday and was one for four with a run scored. Fastball slider from Kinsler. Bloop to right. Leadoff man on in the ninth inning. Stays inside the ball so well. We talk about it a lot, but he does, and that's how he got it. Slider. Nice swing. Got it off the end of the bat, but look at he was going that way the whole time. Served it out there. Whitley's got five bags this year. Got caught yesterday. He's been caught twice. Outside to Alex. Alex has hit three of his home runs this year against Minnesota. He's always hit well here. Two balls and one strike. I remember some bombs he's hit out of here in this ballpark. Yeah. 323 for Alex, Salvador Perez. Highest slugging percentage for anybody at Target Field. Alcides Escobar has driven in a run tonight. Base hit right field. Merrifield's going to make the turn. And he'll be at third base with nobody out. Third time that Alex has been on base tonight. Nice. Couple of walks and a knock. That'll work for him. Merrifield on his horse. At least no question he was going to get third base here. I mean, he's for low flying. Look at him going. That's right. Pick up the ball. There you go. And. The way he ran the bases there, I mean, I'm sure he knew he'd make it first to third, but he ran hard all the way just in case there was a bobble in right field, and he knows Mike Gershley will send you home. And that was the issue that happened yesterday when Paulo got thrown out at home by a mile. Paulo slowed down his last three steps before he got to the base and then picked up Gershley sending him home. But Might have been out anyway, but it would have been a lot closer. Yeah, had he kept going. Now, Cuthbert. Came up with runners at first and third and nobody out in the seventh. And he or first and second and nobody out in the seventh inning. And he flied to left. In the fifth inning he came up with a runner at third and nobody out and he struck out. OK and get the chance to redeem himself. Get the job done here. White, but you got to get your pitch. Make him come up in the zone. Way too aggressive on Irvin Santana when he had that opportunity earlier in the game. Trying too hard. Three and zero. Oh. Escobar's on deck. Mike Jerschley with his left hand pointed his index finger, which is the universal take sign. But they do, you know, they try to trick the opponents to watch it. Four pitch walk to load the bases with nobody out. Trying to be a little too fine there. And now Neil Allen, the Kansas City, Kansas native, Bishop Ward graduate. 
go out and have a chat with Kinsler, who's in a mess. He's saying there's nobody out and they're loaded. You can't give up any more runs here because they've got the waiter in the bullpen. And you haven't said that in a while. Oh, it's been killing me. Merrifield singled. Gordon singled. Cuthbert walked. And Escobar carries his 14 game hitting streak to the plate and he drove in the tying run in the seventh inning and now he has a chance to put the Royals in front. Okay, think middle of the field infield drawn in runners freeze on the line. Esky is not happy with that call 0 and 1. In his last 12 games. Alcides Escobar has driven in 13 runs. Two strikes. Escobar with those big hits he's been getting has his average with runners in scoring position right close to 290. Up the middle. They're going to come to the plate and they get the force. So bases loaded, one out. Jammed him. Couldn't get the good part of the bat on the ball, else that would have went up the middle. Hit a changeup, routine. Anyway, to get the job done. Fastball strike to Butera. He bats for the first time. Just want to get something airborne. Lift him. One and one. Come on. 12 of Uterra's 24 hits this season have gone for extra bases. Nine doubles and three homers. Now they would love one of those, but a sack fly would work here. Clean base hit. And it's one and two. The Royals are one for 10 tonight with a runner in scoring position. They had a runner at third and nobody out in the fifth inning. And did not score. Leadoff man on in the sixth. And did not score. They had runners at first and second. Nobody out in the seventh. And there was their one hit with a runner in scoring position. Escobar tying the game. Base hit right field. Butera goes the other way with two strikes. Alex Gordon scores and the Royals lead for the first time since the first inning. That's the way to pick up the fellas. Didn't try to do too much. That's why you choke up on that bat. You handle the bat head better. It's a little bit more balanced. And he just shot right there. Perfect. It came through. And that's again another hitter staying inside the baseball with his hands in the bottom hand and the hair flip and the pitching change bases loaded one out Royals by one Dyson is coming up
We promised you earlier in the game, it's Miller time. Brought to you by Miller Lite. Royals looking for a big hit. One for ten with runners in scoring position before Drew Butera. Snuck it in the hole, little jam shot. But he kept his hands in there, deserved a, a little hair flip for the boys over there in the dugout. But don't stop there. One out, bases are still loaded. Insurance is important. Lefty Ryan O'Rourke. Appearing in just his 17th game to face Gerard Dyson. Got Suzuki right in the mask. We, him and I talked about his mask before the game. And pointing to his jaw. He has a new mask. And it's one of those that has the hinges on the side. But he did tell me that with that mask, it cut his chin open. I said, well, have you talked to Salvi about that mask? And he goes, no, I hadn't had a chance to. And he says, I like it, except that when he gets hit there, it's it's been cutting his chin. So the of athletic trainer going to get the gauze out. Looks like it might have cut him again. hit so I didn't have time to get the mask and have it break it down for me but that's exactly what he said it did to him earlier this year it cut him but he it absorbs pretty well the, the shock see the hinges the little spring hinges on the side of the mask there that's a new style Played again. And Suzuki had a stretch like a first baseman. So that's how the Twins have gotten two outs in this inning. Force outs at the plate on ground balls. Paul Molitor is wearing a path out from the dugout to the mound. He's going through every reliever he can find out there. Oh, man. What's Denny saying? September bullpens. <laughs> Can't beat fun at the old ballpark. is presented by authority of the Kansas City Royals and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Kansas City Royals baseball club. Ryan Lefevre Rex Hutler with Joel Goldberg and Jeff Montgomery Royals had the bases loaded nobody out in a tie game here in the ninth. They have scored one. And the Twins have got two outs at the plate. And now Pat Light will get
get Paulo Orlando with the bases loaded two down. 6-6-225. Fastball. mid 90 sinker. That's a base hit into right field. One run scores. Throw to the plate. Not in time. Two run score. It's a three run ninth inning. Oh, oh, oh. And Paulo Orlando. How about Paulo in the last week? RBI base hits late in the game with two outs. And first that was pitch. A first pitch. What new? Look at that. Right there to hit him. Hit saying hit me. Light. Turn on the light. Great stroke for Paulo. He earned it. He deserves it. And they'll do some insurance run there for Waiter. And the bullpen again letting Molly down. Three runs are charged to Brandon Kinsler. Eric Hosmer is the eighth man to come up in the inning. Royals have scored nine runs against the Minnesota bullpen in the first two games. No apology will be sent. No. Great job. And here's why, HUD. The Royals have won 50. Of the last 71 games with Minnesota. That's the best winning percentage for one team in the major leagues against any other team in the major leagues since 2013. Wow. So they've dominated. Right. 50 and 21. Whew. Okay, now from 2004 to 2012, the Royals were 43 games below 500 against the Minnesota Twins. Mm. So to borrow one of your phrases there will be no sympathy cards heading north on I-35 from Kansas City to Minneapolis that's right none step on their neck Royals are playing their 15th game with Minnesota tonight and it's their 11th out of 15 where they've scored five or more runs That's up the middle, and it's a four-run ninth inning. And Paulo Orlando will go to third. That's Eric Hosmer's first RBI tonight. Seven-three Royals. Well, Pat Light is getting lit. Molly saying, "We've well, seen it before." Not working. And now the Royals have scored ten runs against the Minnesota bullpen in the last two days. Haas staying right on it. Guiding it up the middle. All four runs are charged to Kinsler. RVers like the vehicle. I, I, I couldn't catch all that. I was looking at the, the small words there. They was giving her RIP for the Mantis. He's still alive, sir. He, he's, he's not deceased. But the first one is lost his life here, or right. her life. Yeah. Maybe she turned that sign to get the glare off so we can. Grammy and Grandpa. And then hi, a name with the letter K. One and two on Morales. He's the ninth man to come up in the inning. The Royals got two in the first. And then Minnesota got two in the first and one in the third. So just like yesterday's game, Minnesota had an early 3-2 lead and a 4-2 lead. And the Royals just ran away late tonight. Minnesota, an early 3-2 lead. And the Royals tie it in the seventh and get four in the ninth. Wade Davis was up. He sat down now. 
Hosmer runs and that is blasted into deep left center field. Clear the deck. Cannonball coming. Woohoo! Was that Cody Clark? Bullpen coach. Nice play. Way to get in the game, Cody. Wow, that ball was tattered and battered, and Pat Light is getting lit. That is five driven in for Kendry's Morales tonight. A two run shot in the first, and now a three run shot in a seven run ninth oh, inning. Oh, that little breaking ball just stayed up. He stayed inside of it. Yeah, look at that. Now we talked earlier in the game about staying inside of the ball, the new phrase that's used now in the 21st century. Look at Cody Clark. He had that measured up. So Morales, breaking ball, back door. If he tries to pull it and rolls his hands over, he hits a ground ball. But because he kept his bottom hand inside of the baseball, watch this. Slow it down if you can, fellas. There's, there's the big dot. Hand through. Now watch him af after he makes contact. He'll roll his hands. That's staying inside. There they roll right there. Beautiful swing. Man, Morales. We talked about in the open before this game started several hours ago. Camo driving the bus along with Eski. That's the 17th multi home run game for Kendry's Morales. He's going to hit 30 this year. Got a ways to go still for his career high. 25 this year. And his career high in 2009 was 34 with the Angels. And he's one RBI shy of his career high tonight. He's had one six RBI game. All this started with Mutt Merrifield blooping a single to right field. He bats for the second time in the inning. And that's not even close. I had a shot of Eddie Gordado out there in the bullpen. <laughs> and he's going to go to the pin again. We've been there. Yep. No sympathy cards, nope. but. We know what this feels like. Two-thirds of an inning yesterday, and now comes on tonight. He gives up two singles, a home run, and a walk. And Paul Mulder has to go to his seventh pitcher tonight. Tomorrow, Danny Duffy against MU Tiger Kyle Gibson. Coverage begins at 6.30 with Hy-Vee Royals Live. First pitch, 7.15, and the Royals head to Chicago. J.T. Shagwa. 
comes on with Merrifield at first base and two down. Shagwa 97 miles an hour. Shagwa's got the best stuff that Molly has in his bullpen. He just inexperienced. He's young. Good hard sinking fastball. Hard slider and a good changeup. Just learn learn how to control that movement he's got. A lot of a lot of uh, sinking action. Two to Alex. Two balls, two strikes. Chicago has defeated Detroit. That's the Royals good. are still a ways out in the division. Cleveland has lost. So the Royals have a chance to be seven and a half back. Now to Dozier at second base. And that'll do it. 11 come to the plate. How about it? Look, it's deja vu all over again. Frenzy style hitting in the ninth. And the Royals drop a seventh spot on the Twinkies. Oh, oh exclamation point Morales. inning all against Paul Molitor's bullpen and now the Royals have scored 13 runs against the Minnesota bullpen in two games yeah that's what you like mop them up now you know as Brian Flynn comes in to finish this one off the Royals have beaten the Minnesota Twins six times here when they beat they win tonight but they've come from behind for the six so it wasn't like you know they they were just dominating them but they would Capitalize on that bullpen late in games. If you don't have a pin, you don't win. Flynn is outside with Eduardo Escobar, who has two hits tonight. Pitcher of record is Dylan G. And that's not lost tonight with the Royals. Coming up with 10 runs. Or the pitcher of record is Kelvin Herrera, my apologies. But Dylan G gave up three runs to the first eight hitters tonight and then retired 15 of the last 17. So that was the beginning of the Royals shutting down this Minnesota offense. And then the Royals tied the game in the seventh inning. Joaquin Soria pits a scoreless bottom of the seventh. Kelvin Herrera 
bottom of the eighth. So Herrera with a chance for a win, and the Royals come up with seven in the ninth. Oh, those crooked numbers. Escobar is down. Flynn begins the ninth inning with a strikeout. Coming up after the game, Boulevard Royals live with Joel and Monty. And same themes tonight as yesterday. Down early, scoring late, power. Royals hit two three-run home runs. Yesterday, they've hit a two-run home run and a three-run home run tonight. And the Royals taking advantage of a young, inexperienced, and beleaguered Minnesota bullpen. You know, I still don't understand why Molly wouldn't leave Santana in to finish that inning in at least. Under 100 pitches, Royals weren't touching him. Two down. And then out of nowhere, here comes Molly. We even thanked him. That man right there is locked in. He can pull home runs, but he just showed you his monster power going to the opposite field from, from the left side of the plate, hitting that ball over the 4 11 side. Robbie Grossman takes outside. 25 home runs. Two months ago, people would go, if you'd have told them that Morales would have 25 home runs in September, they'd say, what? He was scuffling. But he got so hot, he got lava hot, that he made up for his poor start. And then he kind of went cold again, and now he's picking it back up again. Putting some exclamation points on them homers. That will land in the seats. Two and one. So I would imagine that Salvi, with a contusion on his wrist, probably won't play tomorrow and they'll have an off day. Then in Chicago, hopefully that all works out like that. There's no rain's gonna mess with us. Give him a little extra time to rest that wrist. Because he took a pretty good shot from Irvin Santana. And that's kind of what's changed it around a little bit. Terrence, Terrence Gore came in, ripped off second and scored. And that kind of Alex walked. Uh huh. That was the last man that Santana faced. This is Perez leading off the seventh inning. Gore ran for Perez, and then Alex Gordon walked. And that was when Santana was at 99 pitches. Strike three to end the game. Kendrys Morales has driven in eight in the first two games of the series. And the Royals continue to improve on the road. Suddenly, they have won 13 of their last 18 away from Kauffman Stadium. And they have won six straight series against the Minnesota Twins, going back to last year with a chance for a sweep tomorrow night. Oh, the boys are putting up them crooked numbers. Don't matter when they're doing it. Tonight, it was the ninth inning. They dropped the seventh spot. But man, it frenzy hit was on. Whitley, he started.